Hey everybody, it's Fahim from Zip Prescriber, Contractor, Founder of Medlearn. I've got a video for you that is going to be absolutely mind blowing, and that is how you can increase your earning potential and start to make more money so you can make a difference to your lives and the life of others. So, Farouk, let's start walking down here. Let's get into this. Now, as always, make sure that you do subscribe, like and share the channel itself. Plenty of videos are coming out, especially for you, because I want to make sure that you have all the tools and all the knowledge to be the best version of yourself. And in this video, we're talking about how you could potentially, and apologies for that, there's some stuff dropping down, but how you could potentially increase your salary and how much you're earning. And interesting enough, my colleague who works here was actually joking with me and said, wait a second, if you're looking to increase salary, why don't you earn more money and pass money on to us? So remember, if you earn more money, make sure you distribute your wealth and don't be stingy. That's important. So you had a good point. And also, I think I should make a video on how to not lose the money that you have and invest wisely. Okay, so what are we discussing first? At the moment, given the current climate, let's talk about what the average salary of a pharmacist is. Let's talk about community pharmacy first. So in a community pharmacy, on average, you're looking at anywhere between 23, 24, upwards to 28 pound an hour. However, some pharmacists will earn more. But on average, I think you're looking at anywhere between upwards of up to 28 pound an hour. You need me to check something? I can do that for you right now. As you can see, we're in my natural setting. So I'm having to multitask. There's a lot going on here. That is absolutely perfect. Brilliant, thank you, Deja. So as I said, community pharmacy, anywhere between 23 to 28 pound an hour would be the average. Depending on your role, for example, if you're a superintendent pharmacist, your salary can increase more. If you are a business owner, that's a separate conversation in terms of how much you can earn. But essentially, in a community pharmacy, that's the price range that we're looking at or the earning rate that we're looking at. The other area, GP practices. So as pharmacists, you can now work in a GP practice. And again, the salary can vary depending on your experience, depending on what you end up negotiating. But it appears that the salary seems to be around 23 up to 26 pound an hour. However, that salary can go higher and lower depending on your experience and depending on your band. And I'm just going to quickly check this before I have another interruption. Thank you, Teja. I appreciate that. Brilliant. So let's recap what we discussed. At the moment, what's the average salary? Community pharmacy between 23 to 28 pound an hour. If you're working general practice, again, the ranges are similar. I would say between 23 to 26 pound an hour. And for those of you folks who are watching saying, oh, come on Fahim, it's less than that or more than that. This is an average, okay? Now, the other thing I want to mention is, what about if you are working in hospital? And again, in hospital, rates will be similar to what you earn if you're employed. Again, anywhere between 23 to 26 pound an hour, but you can go up to 28 and higher. Now, I've always said to you, make sure that you subscribe, like, and share to this channel because we are making sure that you are getting the best out of the content we deliver. So make sure you do that. Let's move on to talking about if you are a pharmacist, a locum. So if you're a locum pharmacist, your salary can vary. And at the moment in community pharmacy, the average locum rate is around 30 pound an hour. So anywhere between 28 upwards is possible. And that's in a community pharmacy. In general practice, again, you can command a higher rate, but it all comes down to experience and it all comes down to the knowledge base and the knowledge that you have. And that's why we can now move on to how you can increase your potential from earning 23, 24 pound an hour, all the way upwards of 30 pound an hour plus. And how you're going to do that is by investing in yourself. That's the first thing you can do. And I would encourage you that you should look to become a IP. So gain your independent prescribing qualification because once you can prescribe, you can definitely improve or command a higher salary itself. That's going to be quite important. Hey Jeff, you want to see the gentleman who's just waiting. So, right. Why become an IP? So number one, our future pretty much depends on it. After 2024, 25 onwards, all the pharmacists who are going to be qualifying are going to be prescribers. That's the first thing. Secondly, by gaining your prescribing qualification, you can open up options and a doorway. For example, you could help relieve pressure on the NHS and command higher fees. You could go locum on a higher rate. You can set up your own private clinic and command a higher fee. You could work in a community pharmacy, increase your services and maybe have a 
or negotiate a contract with your employer where you can also command a certain fee per service that you offer. So as you can see, that by becoming a prescriber, thank you, Teja, all of a sudden, your options open up. So that's what I would recommend. For me, it was a similar journey. When I started to work as a pharmacist, qualified 2010 onwards, I had worked as a pharmacist for about five, six years, and then I thought, what's next? How do I increase what I could potentially earn, and how do I make a bigger difference into the lives of others? The first thing that came to mind was become an IP. We know there's a shortage of doctors. We know NHS waiting times have not been hit for years. We know that pharmacy can make a difference, and we know that the NHS needs help. So why not decide to gain your prescribing qualification? And that's what I did. You find a university, you find somebody who's willing to supervise you, you choose a scope of practice, you gain your entry, you gain your qualification, you reflect on your practice, you get the skill set, and all of a sudden, you can earn more. Because as an IP, you could, as I mentioned to you before, you could work for out of hours. And you could earn anywhere between £30 an hour plus. And if you go one step further and gain your advanced clinical practice qualification, with the right competencies, you can definitely earn a lot more. And I've heard rates of anywhere from £40 to £50 an hour. So the IP is going to be the main thing that you want to focus on. Then we can say, let's talk outside of IP, and that is developing your skill sets in technology. For example, you could potentially start to improve your knowledge on using AI writing tools, or you can improve your knowledge in, for example, video editing, like my colleague is doing now. You don't have to stick to pharmacy. You could go into property and start to gain knowledge about property and investment. The point is, the more that you invest in yourself, the more that you learn, the more that you diversify, you can potentially earn more. So if you're looking to see in the pharmacy world, I would say gain your IP qualification. If you're looking to do something outside the pharmacy world, I would say, why don't you increase your knowledge base on how to use certain technology tools. Farouk, any tools come to your mind that you would encourage people to do? No, maybe personal branding for the church so they can invest their name to do that. Not for the technology side, they can use the social media. Yeah, so maybe. Ab then, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a good one in terms of mm -hmm. developing your personal brand. So you could develop your personal brand and start to sell a particular product. I mean, if you look at what I did with Medlearn, it had nothing to do with the pharmacy. It was using my knowledge in medicine, my passion for medicine, and I set up a training organization that helps upskill pharmacists and nurses and doctors we're dealing with now. So again, that shows you how I stepped out of my comfort zone, away from pharmacy, away from owning a pharmacy business, into setting up a teaching organization because I had a passion for it, totally separate. You could start to teach and talk about your experience. Absolutely, think about all the experience you have. It could be, for example, in health and nutrition. I've got friends who have a lot of knowledge in health and nutrition who have gone on to set up a totally separate channel, a totally separate information that is on, you know, encouraging people about how to lose weight. So again, you can use your knowledge base, very, very important. So with, with that being said, if we summarize this quickly, in terms of being able to earn more, number one, if you stay where you are, you're not going to be earning more. You have to push and improve yourself. I would say gain your IP qualification first. If you don't want to be in pharmacy and you want to do something else, then expand. Think of something that you enjoy. For me, it was teaching, so I set up something in teaching. Maybe you might want to set up a recruitment agency. Think about recruitment. Think about investing in your personal brand. And then we can talk about business skills. Find out how you can set up your clinic. Find out how you can open your pharmacy. Oh, we're doing videos around these topics. There's so much that you can do but it very much depends on what you want to do. So I hope you found this video useful. And again, I always encourage you, let's together build a better world and let's make a difference not only in our lives, but to the lives of the others. Thank you for watching.